as we've been going through the class, you have picked up on that there are different ways to show chemical formulas, right? Um, we can show a molecular formula like this, and we can show a Lewis structure like this. Now, Lewis structures are really good um, at giving us a 2D, um, but don't help us see spatial orientation, which would be more in 3D. So molecular models are very helpful at seeing um, things in 3D. And so when you come to class, um, we're gonna have molecular models and we are going to look at um, some of the shapes of these molecules. So as we go through this today, I want you to realize that we are gonna use a 2D surface to try to explain something in 3D. And that has a lot of challenges. Um, so like I mentioned, I'm gonna bring molecule kits and we are gonna build some of these molecules in class. And so if it doesn't quite click um, today, please don't get frustrated. Um, come to class, let's build some molecules, come to my office, let's build molecules, and let's um, really start to see these in 3D. And sometimes people are really great at seeing it in 3D, and then sometimes it just takes a while, and that's okay too. All right, so when we start looking at things in 3D, you're gonna hear people talk about bond angles quite a bit. Um, bond angles are given in degrees, and they are just um, defined by lines joining the center of two atoms to the center of a third atom, right? And so um, that's, uh, you know, that's a, a really hard definition, but basically if you look at the central atom here, we're looking at bond angles from, from this bond to this bond or this bond to this bond. Um, and so when we talk about bond angles, that's, that's what we're talking about. Um, it helps us visualize and predict the three-dimensional shape from Lewis structures. Um, so you're going to hear as we go through this talking about bond angles. And again, it's just the angle between two atoms. So I'm just going to put the angle between two atoms. So let's talk about valence shell electron repulsion theory. Um, valence shell electron repulsion theory is shortened to VSEPR. Um, and basically what VSEPR is, is it's just a model that predicts the arrangement of valence electron pairs around a central atom to minimize repulsions. And so when we talk about repulsions here, electrons are negative, and remember, just like magnets, they will repel each other. So there are two types of geometry that we're going to talk about. Um, the first type is electron pair geometry. And these are all the bonding electron pairs and lone pairs around a central atom. View this as kind of like an umbrella, okay? There's, there's six main divisions of electron pair geometry and kind of view it like an umbrella. And so, so this is an umbrella, right? And then underneath it is molecular geometry. And there's a lot of different types of molecular geometry that fall under the different electron pair geometry categories. And so molecular geometry just focuses on the arrangement of atoms in a molecule. That's it, that's all it's focusing on. So um, let's talk about how to figure out electron pair geometry. Um, the way that you need to do this is you need to draw the Lewis structure, right? 
And then from the Lewis structure, you need to determine the steric number. Um, the steric number is the number of atoms bonded to the central atom plus the number of lone pairs. And then you determine the optimal spatial arrangement of electron pairs, bonding and non-bonding, to minimize the repulsions. Um, I want to talk about this for just a second. Basically, for example, if you look at ammonia, you say, okay, hey, look, we got one lone pair here, we have one bond here, we've got one bond here, we have one bond here. That steric number equals four. That's it. That's what we're talking about. Now, that's going to tell you what category that goes in, and that goes in tetrahedral as its electron geometry, and then we can talk about further its molecular geometry, um, which would be trigonal pyramidals, right? So we go through um, a process for this, and I have a really beautiful handout that we'll do in class um, that helps us with this tremendously. So here we go. Here are the five steric number categories. There are five of them. If your steric number is two, you're linear. You got two atoms bonded to a central atom. If it's three, trigonal planar, right? This can, and this it says three atoms, but it could be two atoms and a lone pair, right? Um, four is tetrahedral, five is trigonal bipyramidal, and six is octahedral. These are based on the shape that the, the molecules take. And to see it, you really have to build it. But we're going to try our best. So let's look at um, some central atoms that have no lone pairs. Okay, um, We're going to look at molecular geometries for steric numbers 2 and 3. Okay, um, When we look at this, we see there's no lone pairs. Um, this molecule, what you're looking at is the central atom here and two molecules here. And it makes a line, and so that is linear. This would be something like Cl2, right? Um, that's a really good example. Um, CO, uh, CO2 is a good example. All right, we have a central atom. We've got two, uh, two groups directly off of it. Um, there's no central atom here, but it's still linear. Then you can have trigonal planar, and this is where you have a central atom, and there are three um, atoms off of it. They, this has a bond angle of 120 degrees, um, and it sort of makes a triangle if you pick it up, right? So this is saying, hey, turn it, and it will look like a triangle. Ignore this equatorial plane business, but basically that's what you do. You turn it. Now, you can also have a central atom that doesn't have any lone pairs. Its steric number is four, and it has one, two, three, four groups around it. A good example of this would be methane. Right? And when we draw methane like this, it makes it look like the bond angles are 90. But that's not really the case because it's a two-dimensional drawing. The bond angles are actually 109.5. Then when we get into our expanded octets, we can have a central atom with five things around it, okay? Um, and that's trigonal bipyramidal. And then octahedral has a central atom with six um, different atoms around it. Um, that results in a bond angle of 90, um, which uh, means all of those bond angles are the same. Um, I didn't talk about the bond angles here. I should. Um, when we build this in class, you'll see it. There's a bond angle of 90 here and a bond angle of 120 here. Um, when we talk about these different um, kind of spatially, um, these guys... These three, it's 360 degrees around, divided by three, that's where we get the 120. So I want you to see some examples. Um, and then some, some balloons, right? So some 3D examples. Um, 
CO2, right, would, and I'm going to put the steric numbers here, would be a steric number of 2. BF3 would be a steric number of 3. CCL4 would be a steric number of 4. PF5 would be a steric number of 5. And SF6 would be a steric number of 6. And so that's what we see as far as those geometries are concerned. So I want us to do an example. All right. Formaldehyde is a gas at room temperature. Aqueous solutions of formaldehyde are used to preserve biological samples. Use VESPER to predict the molecular geometry for formaldehyde. Formaldehyde has a Lewis structure that looks like this. When we go through and do this, right, we need to identify the central atom. The central atom here is carbon. The next step is we need to identify how many groups are attached to the central atom. There's one group here, there's one group here, and there's one group here, okay? Even though that's a double bond, it counts as one, okay? And so that means the steric number equals three, and when the steric number equals three, and they're all bonds, the molecular geometry here is trigonal planar, right? Um, now, maybe the burning question in your heart is, Dr. Pierce, I have heard you say there are no lone pairs on any of these molecules. What do we do when there are lone pairs? And I'm so glad you asked that. When you come over and here and we look at what happens when there are no lone pairs, when there are no lone pairs, the molecular geometry isn't the same as the electron pair geometry anymore, okay? So for example, if you look at SO2 here, um, SO2, this is um, the Lewis structure for it. And um, it, it actually has two identical Lewis structures, they're here and here. We're gonna focus on one right now. If we look here, we're gonna see there's one, two, three groups, but they're not bonding. So they are no longer called, um, it's no longer considered to be trigonal planar geometry is the molecular geometry. Um, that molecular geometry is bent. Now. We call the electron pair geometry trigonal planar, but the molecular geometry gets a new name, and it's bent, okay? Now, the big deal here is that when lone pairs come into play, the bond angles are less than predicted. This is where that electron pair repulsion comes in, right? These electrons are going to repel these electrons and push these guys together right here. And so that means the bond angles now are gonna be less than they were originally predicted. So less than 120. Let's look at what happens when you have a steric number of four. Um, so this was an example that I gave before. Uh, this would be the Lewis structure. And this would be tetrahedral electron pair geometry. Again, electron pair geometry includes the electrons and the molecules. Molecular geometry, we're just looking at the molecules. And so when we do that, there's one, two, three here, and this ends up being trigonal pyramidal. Um, when we build it, because we'll build this in class, you can see that it forms a little pyramid. Um, we are gonna see the bond angles decrease as the number of lone pairs increase. So tetrahedral, we, when we remember when we had tetrahedral, CL, 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 and CL, where we had the electron pair geometry for CCL4 is tetrahedral and the molecular geometry is tetrahedral. These bond angles here were 109.5. Now they're 107 because those lone pairs are squeezing those bond angles um, closer together. We actually have a couple molecular geometries in um, under steric number four. Um, for example, you can see water here. 
Water has four groups, one, two, three, four, and so it's a tetrahedral electron pair geometry. When you remove those, um, you see that we have two uh, bonds here, and so this is called bent, okay? Now, you've got two lone pairs with greater repulsion. It's even a smaller bond angle of 104.5. Now, let's talk about the steric number five. With the steric number five, um, we can have uh, quite a few um, molecular geometries, right? Because we can remove more, um, more bonds, bonded electron pairs are replaced with lone electron pairs. So let's look at the first one here, right? If you have four bonded atoms and one lone pair, the electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal, but the um, molecular geometry is seesaw. If you have three bonded atoms and two lone pairs, the electron pair geometry is still trigonal bipyramidal because there are five groups, but now we have a T-shape with our atoms, and so that's the molecular geometry. Um, if you come here and there are three electron pairs here, um, then that is a linear molecular geometry. So a lot of times both the electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry help us identify the characteristics of the molecule because uh, there are so many linear molecular geometries running around. And so that's why we're asked to give, give both geometries. Now, with a uh, steric number of six, we have a central atom with six things around it. That's octahedral, and that's the octahedral electron pair geometry. If one of those atoms is replaced with a bonding pair, um, that gives us square pyramidal. Um, it will sit on your desk and form a pyramid. And then um, if two are removed, it'll give you square planar. It forms a square, and it's planar, so it sits flat. Um, so... Um, I know that was a lot spread over a lot of different um, uh, slides. Different people learn different ways. So maybe you're a slide person and you were like, that was amazing, right? Maybe you are a three-dimensional kinesthetic learner and you are going to come to class and we are going to build these molecules and do a foldable and that will make it click. Or Maybe you're, you learn best from tables. And so the next two slides, right, are tables. And so this summarizes what we've done. So watch. You've got something that's trigonal planar. It's got three bonded atoms, no lone pairs. Molecular geometry is trigonal planar. Electron pair and molecular geometry are the same thing. Here's an example. We did that example. You have something that's got three Two, three things around it, two bonded atoms and one lone pair. The electron pair geometry is trigonal planar, but the molecular geometry is now called bent. SO2 is a good example of that. Tetrahedral has four bonded atoms, right? And so it's electron pair geometry, molecular geometry are the same. But when one of those bonded atoms is a lone pair instead of a bonded atom, it's still tetrahedral, but now it's trigonal pyramidal. And then two and two, it's tetrahedral, but now it's molecular geometry is bent. And you can see the examples here. For sterics five and six, right? Um, we have five, four, three, two of the bonds. And then here's our lone pair, zero, one, two, three. And you can see trigonal bipyramidal for molecular, seesaw for molecular, T-shape for molecular, and linear for molecular. And then here at octahedral, there's just three. Now, these geometries are possible, but we are not going to run into any molecules with those geometries, so we're not going to focus on them. Um, instead, we're going to focus on octahedral, square pyramidal, and square planar. So... <clears throat> I want us to do another example, okay? Here is the Lewis structure SF 
um, four, right? And so we are um, asked to identify the molecular geometry and the angles between the SF bonds, okay? So when we look at this, the first thing you need to do, right, is count bonded electrons and lone pair electrons. And so you come here and you're like, okay, there's around the sulfur, okay? There's one bond here, right? There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and then we've got a pair of lone pairs. So that means my steric, my steric number here equals five, okay? Um, When the steric number equals five, the electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, now, the next thing we need to do is identify the number of bonded atoms and lone pairs. So we have four bonded atoms, right, and one lone pair. So if you flip back to the chart, I think that would be the best kind of place to go right this moment, and you go under trigonal bipyramidal and you go one down, you are going to see um, that if there is four bonded pairs and one lone pair, that molecule has a seesaw shape. And so that's our molecular geometry. And then um, it's asked for the angles. When we look at this, right, um, what we're going to see is that you have sulfur here, and then you've got a fluorine here and a fluorine here. And then kind of back outside, like going towards the plane of the paper, you are going to have another fluorine. And then kind of coming this way, you're going to have a fluorine. And then your, your little electron pairs will sit there. So they're in that equatorial um, position where they're not linear. They're not up here and up here, but they're one of these three that are a kind of like if you think about the equator of the earth, right? They're coming out from the center of that atom. And so those lone pairs sit sit there because there's more space, right? These bond angles are 120. These right here um, are 90. So that's where the electrons are gonna go. And so what's gonna happen here is it's going to reduce the bond angle um, and make it less than 120 degrees, right? So um, this for us finishes Vesper. Um, again, uh, I, I'm a big believer in building the molecules and seeing this. Please, please, please come to class. If for some reason you can't make it to class, please, please, please come to my office. I'll have molecule kits for you. And you can build these and see um, what we're talking about. A, a seesaw structure looks like a seesaw when you build it. And so that, that makes sense um, for us. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to stop by my office.